Greetings, Deep Dive Podcast listeners. This is your boy, Sam Orham, coming at you with another episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. Our Thursday night podcasts have been off the proverbial chain. <laughs> I tell you what, guys, I'm so excited. I know I say that every week. You probably get tired of me saying that, but it has been an incredible, incredible uh, season thus far with uh, the Deep Dive Podcast. We're really excited about what we're doing with the podcast, how we're empowering people, educating people, having fun, all those good things. So it's it's been a great ride. We want to continue that tonight. But before we get into uh, the topic, I really want to, again, thank all of our listeners from around the world. We're in about 172 countries, so I I don't take that for granted uh, via One Voice Radio. I'm excited about that. And um, I just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You could do a whole lot of things with your time and the fact that you're sharing your time with us or me here with the Deep Dive Podcast. That really means a lot. So thank you very, very much. I would I would continue to uh, uh, ask for your support and your, you know, just liking the podcast, subscribing to the podcast, downloading and sharing. We're on every podcast platform. We're live, as you know, on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. So we're doing some great things, but we can only do that because of you. So I thank you so very much. I want to talk about a topic uh, tonight that uh, I think is really important and uh, really in the bigger picture of of business and life. This is something that has really helped a lot of people. This this uh, example of of success that I'm going to share with you tonight, uh, talking about the cash flow quadrant, it has helped a lot of people in terms of understanding what success is and being able to manipulate life so that you can achieve that success just by being aware and understanding of what you need to do um, to to be successful anyway so the topic of course is cash flow quadrant most of you know this by now now what i want to do this is a more hands-on type of podcast obviously if you're driving or you know you're doing something you cannot actively participate but i would encourage you to come back you can listen now but I would encourage you to come back and physically do what we're going to talk about on this podcast is uh, so let me let me just say this real quick. Sometimes people ask, why are you always saying we we you know what we're going to do when you're on the podcast by yourself? Why this just reminded me of this. They say you're always saying we we're going to do this. We're going to do that. But it's you and your podcast and you by yourself. And I told I promised them I would explain why why I always say we. And uh, it's because I never want to get into the mindset of I, 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 me, me, me. It's never about me. You know, it's never about me. It's always about us. It's always about we. It's always about the team, the group, Um, even though I may be doing a a solo podcast or this is my podcast, but I always say we. So that that's why that's why it's, um, you know, I talk about we even when it's just me. So. um, But. Speaking of, of the cash flow quadrant, uh, most of you know that Robert Kiyosaki, he's an author, he's a uh, financial guru of sorts. Uh, he has several books out, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, uh, Cash Flow Quadrant is one of his books. But I've used the concepts behind the cash flow quadrant for many years in business because the mindset behind it is very powerful not so much endorsing what he's doing, but the concepts that may not have been created by him, but have been very successful in the world of business and personal uh, equity. You know, so I want to be able, I wanted to be able to share that with you briefly on tonight's episode, just explaining what it is. But as I was about to say, uh, when you get an opportunity, you want to write this down, what I'm talking about can't do it if you drive and come back and do it a little bit later. It's not difficult at all, but it's a mental exercise that if you can do this properly, I guarantee you, I can't make guarantees, but I, I, I can strongly suggest that you'll have some semblance of success when you understand, you know, we talked in a previous episode about awareness, you'll understand what these things are all about. So let's just jump right into it. You know, a quadrant is four, it's four different parts, right, to a quadrant. Imagine, or if you if you're physically writing this down, write this down, pen and paper. Um, if you're not, just imagine you drawing a big like plus sign on a sheet of paper, a big plus sign, so that you have four quadrants. On the left side, you have a top and bottom, and on the right side, you have a top and bottom. That is a quadrant, right? 
each one of those uh, four areas are called quadrants. And I want to break this down into the, the mindset of successful people versus people that have to conform. I'll start with the upper left part of the quadrant. Um, and if you're writing this down, you want to put the word employee in that quadrant. Employee. This is the upper left. Okay. Upper left. You want to put the word employee in that quadrant. Now, we know what an employee is. An employee has a job. Right? They have a job. They trade their time for money. Okay, They trade their time for money. Now, I'll elaborate on these quadrants, but I want you to write this down first. And in the lower uh, left side, the bottom left, uh, you want to write self-employed. Okay, Write self-employed. Now, if you're self-employed, you actually own a job. A lot of people get that confused. They think they own a business, but if you're self-employed and anybody that's self-employed, they can tell you this, you actually own a job and you're still, believe it or not, trading time for money. Again, I'll elaborate, but just write that down or make a mental picture of it if you just if you can't write it down. Um, on the right side of the quadrant, the upper right, you wanna write business owner, two words, business owner. Okay, write that business owner. Business owner, you actually have a system. Business owners have a system. And as a business owner, you're trading what's called, you know, OPT, other people's time for money. Other people's time for money. Okay, and then at the bottom right of the quadrant, you want to write investor. Investor. In this quadrant, the bottom right, you, you actually own investments, okay? So if you look at the quadrant as a whole, the upper left quad, you have employee. The lower left, you have self-employed. The upper right, you have business owner. And the lower right, you have investor. Now, when you think about this again, employee, you're just basically trading time for money. The challenge with that is the most valuable thing that you have is your time. We don't even know what the expiration of your time is, so we cannot waste it. Certainly, we don't want to just live out life trading uh, time for money, right? Then you look at being self-employed, and I said that you actually own a job. You're still trading time for money, and 90% of the population, 90% of the population shares 3% of the wealth. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, 3% of the people control the money. That's the simplest way of putting it, right? 3% of the people control the money. But even if you're self-employed, you're still trading time for money. Let me give you an example. You know, Mr. Doctor, you're self-employed, but if you don't have patients, um, if you don't see patients, I should say, if you don't see patients, you don't get paid. Mr. Attorney, if you don't see clients, you don't get paid. Uh, you know, Mr. Miss Accountant, if you don't see your clients, then you don't get paid. You're still transferring time for money, even as a self-employed person. And I, I'm self-employed in a lot of cases, so I can attest to this, but I'm also on this right side of the quadrant where I talked about in terms of business owners and investors. Let's kind of dig a little bit deeper into what all of this means and how does this actually relate to you from uh, you know the standpoint that we're sharing today. First of all, as an employee, we talk about, you know, people trading that time for money, but why are people willing to trade their valuable time for money? Well, it's because they want security. They want security. They want the security of having a paycheck come every week or paycheck every month. You know, they want a safe job that have benefits, a secure job that have benefits, as secure as it possibly can be. You know, they want to, you know, those type of things that they feel comfortable knowing that they have a paycheck coming in. So that's the appeal for people who are employees. Well, what about the self-employed people? Why are they still trading time for money, but they're self-employed? What's the difference? Well, they're going to go out on their own, but what they're seeking is independence. They're seeking independence. So even though they're still trading time for money, they're seeking independence. So again, you got the employees, they're seeking security, right? Then you have the self-employed people who are uh, seeking independence. So you got security on one hand, independence on the other. 
Now let's look at the right side of the quadrant, the upper right, where you have your business owners. Business owners, they have a mindset where they want to, you know, work with the team because they build in the system, right? They want to work with as many people as possible. Let me tell you something that's powerful. Ash, I'll ask it in the form of a question. How, well, if you're working every hour of a particular day, every single hour, the most that you can get paid on is 24 hours. It doesn't matter what you do. If you're the only person working, you're, you're you know, 24 hours in a day, you can only get paid on 24 hours. So how can you get paid on two, 240 hours in a day? Well, you incorporate the efforts of 10 other people, you know, not even counting your own efforts, but 10 other people. Now you have access to their 24 hours, 24 times 10, that's 240 hours a week that you can get paid or a day that you can get paid on. That's the mindset of a business owner, incorporating the efforts of other people. Employers have employees, right? Business owners are on a mission. They're on a mission. They're somewhere in terms of looking for that ultimate freedom, looking for that ultimate success. And speaking of freedom, that takes us to the last part of the quadrant, which is the lower right. That is the investor quadrant. This is where freedom comes into play. Here's why. Your money works for you. You're putting things in place where your money actually works for you. So when you look at it, so now let's kind of go through all of these quadrants again. If you've written this down, okay, you got your employees on the left, self-employed on the left bottom, business owners top right, investors bottom right. So when you, you where you want to be, guys, is on the right side of the quadrant. You always want to be on the right side of the quadrant. That means you're ultimately getting toward a business owner or you get in, into investments. And the best case scenario is both. You create an environment of success and, and disposable income, if you will, if there's such a thing, from the business owner standpoint. And now you take a percentage of that and you go into investments, okay? When you're looking at business, you, you want to be able to, one of the appeals of the mission of a business owner is that it's designed to expand quickly. It's designed to expand quickly because you're incorporating the efforts of other people. Theoretically, you're, you're limitless in terms of the possibilities because you have so many people working towards your financial interests. When you look at an Amazon, Amazon wouldn't be Amazon, a trillion dollar company, were it not for all of the employees and all of the people who comprise the entire company of Amazon. It can go, grow quickly because of the fact that it's incorporating the uh, efforts of other people. So if you compare and contrast that to being self-employed, you have a, um, you know, uh, a restaurant, right? Or you have a uh, whatever type business is. Uh, again, let's, let's just say you're an attorney. You're self-employed, but it's just one you. You can't even pass that degree to your kids. They would have to go and become educated to be a lawyer, doctor, accountant, whatever the case may be. That was, those are some of the limitations of being self-employed. There's some gratification there. It's better than being an employee, but there are still limitations. There are no limitations when you're talking about a business owner because you're, in, you're incorporating the efforts of other people. You can expand quicker. You can do a whole lot more. And it continues to grow even when you're not there. Think about it again. Your business, as a business owner, if you've set things up properly and even in investments, these are things where you can make money while you're sleeping. Mr. Doctor, can you make money while you're sleeping, you know, in terms of seeing a patient or Mr. Attorney? Now, I'm, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not poo-pooing poo those self-employed professions. I'm just trying to make a contrast between an employee and a self-employed individual versus business owners and investors. It's not to, to diminish anybody's profession or what they're doing or their choices. That's not even my point. My point is just kind of bringing clarity to what the options are. And you can decide. Some people may want to stay in the employee quadrant. Why? Because they're comfortable there. Remember the key word is security. They're comfortable there. They know they're going to get a paycheck if the business continues to thrive that they're working for. And so they they like that level of 
comfort, that level of security. 97% of the people are on the left side of the quadrant. I said earlier, 3% control the money. 97% of the people on the left side, they're either employees or self-employed individuals. When you want to transition from quadrant to quadrant, it's more than just changing uh, your mind. You have to change some habits. You have to change some core values. You have to start to understand. One of the podcasts I did in the past, I broke down how you should spend every dollar. I talked about 10, 10, 25, 55. 10 goes, 10% of every dollar you make goes to uh, your place of worship or tithes or whatever it is first. Then the second 10% goes to you. Uh, then you have 25% that goes towards uh, either self-development, personal development, or developing a business. And then your debt shouldn't be any more than 55% of what you earn. Well, if you understand that, changing your quadrant requires you to be disciplined in that area, in that 10, 10, 25, 10, 10, 25, 55, because a part of that 25% that you're investing in yourself or investing in a business that's on the right side of that quadrant. You need money to build a business. You need money to build it and expand it and grow it. You know, one of the concepts with Amazon is, uh, you know, you well, I, I want to get into that model. Just understand you're going to need money to build on the right side of the quadrant. So if you understand that 10, 10, 25, 55 model, then you'll understand that. And if you can discipline yourself and understand and change those core values, then you'll have financing on the right side. Uh, it may take some time because you have to discipline yourself mainly not to have any more debt than 55%. If your debt is more than 55% of what you bring in, you're living above your means or you need to increase your income. But if you work that formula perfectly, then you're going to have money to invest in yourself or to invest in a business. Okay. Because most people live on that left side of the quadrant, you have to make that mental shift. Very few people ever know a true business, what a true business ownership is. Very few people, because it requires a lot. It requires a lot of, of you to run, operate, and mentally sustain yourself in terms of building a successful business. You have to change some things. I said, you know, you have to change some core thoughts, some core beliefs, some ideologies you have to change some things in order for your life to change you got to change right you have to make a mental shift to go from this left side of the quadrant to the right side so what are some of the things that you may need to change in order to get those core values or to get to the right side well sometimes your environment everybody is the sum total of the five people that they hang around the most just test it and see look at anybody and then look at the five people they hang around the most. And I can pretty much assure you that they have a similar type of mindset, thought process. In some cases, they're in similar financial situations, all that other kind of stuff, right? Birds of a feather flock together. When people say rubbing elbows with the rich, that's not literally rubbing elbows. What they're talking about is getting out of your environment and having a conversation with people who are um, have a bigger vision who have a bigger purpose, who really are doing something greater than where you are at the particular time. It's not that you're doing anything wrong or bad, but you have to understand that sometimes in order to grow, you got to come out of your environment. That's one of the changes that you may need to make. Um, sometimes you have to change unprofitable activities. What are some things that you're doing that are unprofitable? Now, let me, let me, let me put a caveat here because a lot of times people look at profit strictly as numerical profit numbers dollars sometimes profit comes into the in the form of education sometimes profit comes in the form of spiritual uplifting sometimes profit comes in the form of growth uh, uh, acceptance you know so there are various ways that you can receive a profit it's not just um, monetary profit. Now, when I'm saying profit, by the way, I'm talking about P-R-O-F-I-T, P-R-O-F-I-T, not prophetic people. I'm talking about profit, right? So there are various things that you can equate to 
maybe I should change the word from profit to value, you know, so there is a value there. Sometimes you have to change activities that don't bring value into your life. But they, if they bring value, that's great. Now we're talking about, again, moving from the left side of the quadrant to the right side. These are some changes that you may have to make. Sometimes you have to change your friends. Look, I, I love a lot of my friends, but a lot of my friends, I wouldn't hang with them. Uh, not because I don't love them, but because we're doing different things. I'm, I'm pushing to always be great. And if your desire is the security of your job, that's perfectly fine. That's just not where I am, right? So it's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes if you can't change your friends, change your friends. Think about that. Sometimes if you can't change your friends, change your friends. And again, I'm not trying to say, you know, walk away from people. I'm, that's not my point. I'm talking more so of a mindset. You have to be able to do that. And I, sometimes I get with my my good friends and and we cut up and we laugh and we I have a good friend he did a podcast a couple of podcasts with me um you'll see on the uh, deep dive podcast website deep dive podcast live he's a doctor young doctor his name is david duke and uh not that david duke the a, a good david <laughs> but anyway he did a couple of podcasts with me and uh go back and listen to him it's on medicine holistic health and things of that nature but uh we're very very close very good friends and um you know he's a doctor and i'm a, a business owner right but when we have our friend time it's crazy you know it's 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 crazy you know we uh i can't get give you all our business but you know we may be video games we're talking about you know atv we're talking about you know, just all kinds of stuff. They ain't get into all of that, but it's different than our profession. He's a doctor. I'm a business owner. Um, but we have a, a friendship, right, that circumvents all of that kind of stuff. What am I saying, guys? That, that you know, all I'm saying is you're not you don't have to leave your friends. You just have to have a certain mindset. And if your mindset uh, if the mindset of your friends is not conducive to what you need to get on the right side of the quadrant, then you got to find new friends who do have that mindset, still not dismissing your core friends. Sometimes you have to change your habits. A lot of us have bad habits that in order to succeed on the right side of the quadrant, you have to change those habits. One of the things for me, one of my pet peeves is just being on time, being on time. Um, I, I don't understand why people habitually are late. There are some people who are just habitually late. No matter what it is, you can count on them being late. And I'm the total opposite. You can count on me always being on time or being where I say I'm going to be when I say I'm going to be there, even with business. A couple, a couple of weeks ago, I had a business call scheduled. This was a high level business call. I mean, a high level business call. And uh, at the top of the, it was at the top of the hour, whatever time it was, I had a high level business call. It was very important for me. And it was very important for the business owner that I'm, I'm going to, I was going to meet with or meeting with. And uh, we had a Zoom meeting set up and everything at the top of that particular hour. And so I had a preconceived idea before the meeting even started. And I do this a lot, by the way. I'm like, you know, I'm only going to be, I'm only going to wait 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, and I only wait 10 minutes, by the way, because of the level of this meeting, most of the time, I'm not going to wait that long. Um, it was very, very important. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, the reason I'm stressing how important it is, because I want to stress my point in terms of habits. And for me, being on time. So I'm there. I'm on time. For me, being on time is 5, 10, 15 minutes uh, prior to whatever scheduled time. And so the top of the hour came and the guy wasn't on. And then, you know, five minutes went by and the guy wasn't on. Now I'm I'm sweating because I really wanted him to get on. I really wanted to do this. Uh, then six minutes went by, seven minutes went by, eight minutes went by, nine minutes went by. And I knew this guy had about 60 seconds. And I, I don't care how important that meeting was. I put this on everything. I was hanging up. And right before the 10 minutes, like probably nine minutes and 45 seconds, he logged on to the Zoom. First thing I told him, he had about 15 seconds and I was hanging up and I don't care what happened. I didn't care about the deal. I didn't care about none of that because 
at my core, integrity is everything. And for me, integrity or habits that create, you know, uh, uh, certain things is, is, is based on integrity. And for me, being on time is one of them. If you tell you somebody you're going to do something and when you're going to do it, then honor that. Some people habitually just go through life thinking, oh, I can be late or I can do this or it, is, and it, it doesn't work for me. Right. So even though that deal was important, I was willing to just 86 it and just because I was going to hang up never to re uh, approach that person again, ever. Those are some habits that you may need to change. I always talk about educating yourself. So sometimes you may need to change your, your knowledge base, study some things, do your research, do your due diligence, schedule productive time for your business, not active time, but productive time. I have this issue a lot with, you know, a lot of people that are part of uh, my one voice company. And I don't say this to disparage people, but, you know, I'm always honest when I when I talk about this. I have to explain to a lot of people the difference between activity and productivity. Activity is just doing something. You're showing up. You're showing up on time. You know, you're doing all of those things, which is great, is admirable. But it's not necessarily productivity. Productivity is the acquisition of customers if you have a shoe store it is the acquisition of customers if you're or you're an amazon or walmart it is the selling of your products or services if you are a business owner of sort remember we're talking about the right side of that quadrant you don't want to get caught up in activity you want to always stay on the side of productivity so you know straightening up your desk file cabinets all that other kind of stuff all of that's activity that, that that's not going to make you money what makes you money is productivity. So you want to stay productive at all times. So look, guys, these are just some of the things that why it's so important to understand what the cash flow quadrant is, to understand both sides of the quadrant, the left side, again, being employees and, in, and self-employed individuals, and then the right side being business owners and investors, and knowing and understanding the difference. What is the difference? How am I going to get to the right side of the quadrant. How am I going to get to the right side of the quadrant? I'm going to do something that I rarely do. I, I, I have a difficult time self-promoting. Y'all know that I don't promote the book a lot. Other people promote the book more than I do. Matter of fact, shout out to the book club, the Mindset of a Champion book club. You guys are incredible people, uh, but they do more promoting. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of things and I don't self-promote. I just don't, I just, just not who I am. But tonight I want to make a bit of an exception because I think this is very important. I've been offering people a business opportunity for many, many years. And a lot of people accept, a lot of people don't, no matter what their financial situation is or, you know, how they may be struggling financially. Uh, as a lot of you know, I have a company called One Voice Worldwide. One Voice is a brand of companies. You, if you're looking on YouTube, you see One Voice Radio. Um, I own One Voice Radio Station. Uh, it's an international radio station. I own that, own the One Voice Worldwide. Uh, there are some other ancillary brands that's a part of that, Fair, the Hot Shot Mall, all of these different companies that I own. But one of the companies, One Voice Worldwide, it is an, a company that offers business opportunity self-development and education and empowerment. I want you, if, you, if you're seeking to get on the right side of that quadrant and you don't have a means to get to the right side, you may be an employee, you may be self-employed and just still wondering how can you get to the right side of that quadrant. I want you to hit me up, hit me up, shoot me an email at the uh, info at the deep dive podcast dot live info at the deep dive podcast dot live um, or you can go to the website the deep dive podcast dot live there's a voicemail there you can leave a voicemail you can leave a message if you want to own your own business if you want to educate yourself on the value of owning your own business if you want to learn what success principles are all about and then take those success principles build a business Build a company within a company, take that money and now invest it and make money while you sleep. I don't get into investments, but I, I can show you how to make the money so you can do your own investing, right? Then get, give your boy a shout. Hit, hit me up. 
uh, again, info at the deep dive podcast live or go to the website deep dive podcast live and leave a voicemail. However, you can communicate. I would give my phone number, but I'm not going to give my phone number. Uh, but yeah, hit me up, man, because we, we can help you with that. Now, people may say, well, you know, I don't like doing this. or I don't like doing that. Look, people make millions of dollars in waste management. You think they like waste? It's not so much what you like. It's a means to an end. How are you going to get from point A to point B and from point B to point Z, point Z, if you don't go through a process of things you like and don't like? So hit me up and we'll show you, you know, how you can actually um, get your own business, your own company within a company. All right. So with that, guys, uh, I appreciate you tuning in to this particular episode called Cash Flow Quadrant. Hopefully you learned something from it. If you didn't get a chance to write these things down, the E, the self-employed, the B, and the I for business owners. So it's E-S-B-I, E-S-B-I. If you didn't get a chance to write that down and write down some information, go back, listen to this episode again. Make sure you get the information. Make sure you educate yourself on what this is all about. And we're going to make sure that we continue to have success across the board, not just financial success, mental, spiritual, and otherwise. All right. Thank you again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, download, and share this podcast. Share it, share it, share it on Facebook. Click that Facebook link, share it to your friends, share it on YouTube, share it to your friends. Get this message out and let's get ready for next Thursday night's episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. God bless you all and I'll see you on the beaches of the world.